What's up guys, it's your boy, John Darko Chapman, and yeah, welcome to Tri-State photo, uh, photo and Video. This is our first episode, and uh, yeah, thanks for, I guess, hanging in there with me, especially everybody that's kind of been in the group. Um, I haven't done a whole lot of activity in the group, so the group's been almost dead and stagnant, and I do apologize for that, that is my fault, but <laughs> I've just been so busy that I haven't really had time to really work on and, and put together these projects. And every time that I do shoot a project, I always end up having to cancel it and and start over and everything else. And I'll come back to it and I'm like, oh yeah, I don't like that, let me do it again. So finally, you know, I carved out a serious amount of time. I carved out like, man, like four months of just like nonstop getting stuff done a ton of projects that I had on my plate and just clearing as much as I can to be in a position to basically do this um, and some other passion projects that I have in mind and so forth but this was a big one that I, I seriously wanted to get to people have been asking me to do this for some time and put together some tutorials and different things like that so yeah this is going to be it so basically this is going to be like a variety show um, I'm going to cover a little bit of everything so from tutorials reviews uh, um, interviews, uh, live streams I'm going to do sometimes. I might do some live streams where I'm just working and people can chime in. Uh, we'll do some chat group type stuff. So I plan to mix it up and do a little bit of everything. Th these first couple shows will definitely be about um, some tutorials. Um, now the tutorials I'm going to handle a little bit different. I'm not going to do just kind of like, you know, this is how you use curves or, you know, this is how you do color grading or this is frequency separation. Instead, I'm going to try and break down and help you guys with problems and situations and things that occur when you're shooting, when you're on set, when you're doing jobs, when you're doing projects. And how do you tackle that? How do you handle them? Um, when stuff goes wrong, basically, what do you do? Um, a lot of times when I have friend photographers, people that I've, I've um, helped and, and trained over the years and things like that, when they come to me, it's always questions of like, yo, I got this shoot coming up and what do I do with this, right? Or I did this shoot and this went wrong and I'm looking in the camera and, and what's being translated to the computer and what happened, man, and stuff like that. So I'm going to try my best to answer and help and do tutorials for things like that. You know, there's so many uh, tutorial channels and, and photography channels out there and everything else. You know, I'm trying my best not to, to cover the same stuff that everybody else is covering and add something different to the platform that I think will be helpful and so forth. Uh, same with um, some of the interview stuff that I'm going to do down the road. Uh, I'm going to try and mix it up. I'm not going to do just like um, photographers and stuff like that or even just models. Um, I'm going to bring on designers, I'm going to bring on um, some directors, um, some different videographers and film artists that I work with. I'll bring them, um, plan to bring in uh, some, some music artists, some, some well-known people and, and some not so well-known and everything else in between and talk about some things in the industry and if you're trying to get into video and music videos and movies and film and TV or whatever. So I'm going to try and cover the gambit as much as I can. Um, and just bring on a whole bunch of different kind of people. And, and I've been very fortunate over the years to meet a ton of interesting people in this field. And, uh, you know, hopefully I can bring them to you. So without further ado, we'll get into this show. I'll try and keep this short. This one's going to be short. I plan to do some reenactments and, and uh, we'll do some fun stuff down the road. But for this one, I'll keep it pretty straight forward and, and you know just try and tackle some stuff so real quick short uh brief interlude story whatever you want to call it before we get to the actual tutorial um so basically this was a job that i did for a friend of mine uh he was starting an apparel company for motorsports um philadelphia is where i'm from and where i'm at right now born and raised playground i never really spent that many days <laughs> um is what we're going to be uh basically i'm sorry no. He wanted to do basically uh, kind of a, a motorsport apparel company. Um, he made a bunch of different t-shirts and outfits and things based on that. Um, it's called Black Moto. So he wanted to do um, a line that kind of showed that, expressed that and things like that. So, you know, I thought he was just going to get together. I said, yeah, man, go get some bikes and some friends and stuff, some stuff together. I'll see if some miles are interested to help out with this and we'll put something together. And lo and behold, he came back with a whole company and a whole um, um, a dealership, basically, that sells uh, 
um, Italian bikes. So, you know, it was like, okay, I, I guess this is what we're doing. <laughs> and uh, it ended up being cool in, in the whole situation where we started a relationship with them. And it looks like hopefully we'll be doing some more work for them. So big shout out to Motoplex. Um, they are a dealership out of Westchester, um, right outside, uh, suburb right outside of Philly. And they're actually getting ready and they're looking at opening another location in Philly. And uh, we were at a pop-up location that they had in Philly where they had a lot of their bikes and stuff like that on display and so forth. And they were super cool with letting us shoot there and do a whole project and so forth. So basically, the trouble I ran into on this project was my boy wanted everything to be basically black because, you know, it was a black moto. <laughs> so it makes sense. So and I had to shoot on location because we couldn't take the bikes off location. So I had to really figure this out and said, okay, well, of course, first we'll get a big backdrop and so forth and we'll do some stuff with that and then we'll shoot some stuff outside. So that was kind of the plan. So I went, all right, well, I got backdrops in the studio. Let me go see what's up in the studio. Went to the studio. There were no black backdrops. Uh, we actually only had like a bunch of like color ones, like pink and orange and stuff. So I was like, okay, that's a problem. Well, let me go to a uh, photography store. You just reimburse me. There's tons of them. You know, um, they all sell backdrops. They'll have a black backdrop. Get to all the photography stores, no backdrops. And I mean none. I called around like crazy. And keep in mind, this is too late to go and like order off of YouTube or I mean, sorry, off of um, Amazon or something like that. So, you know, I had to really kind of think fast on my feet. So they had a dark gray backdrop. So I was like, all right, cool. I can work with that and some things I can figure out. So the first thing I thought is I'm going to get the black backdrop. That place, the, the uh, location where uh, Motoplex was at was pretty long. So I was like, all right, I'll just stretch it super long. I'll shoot at a long distance, you know, so therefore the dark gray backdrop is basically black, right? So got to Moto Guzzi, realized my distancing wasn't exactly correct and I couldn't shoot that far. And it's like, ah, uh, crap. Okay. So now I got to figure out something else. So basically it went to editing. Um, it went to a different way. Well, one uh, specific way of how I shot them and then two to the editing. So first I'll go over the how I shot them. So I decided to do everything overhead. And um, he also wanted some colors and stuff to go with the logos and, and things. So, you know, I ended up shooting uh, with some gels across and things like that. But I decided to shoot everything kind of above to really help with you know, just making sure that um, I could get it as black as possible so no, so not a lot of light hit the um, back of the wall and it would make it as dark as possibly can. So I could have like almost like a nice little vignette that would be dark. But it still was pretty close. It wasn't like they could turn all the lights off in the room. So in the, the facility where we were at, they were controlled somewhere else. So, you know, I kind of got a little stuck. So what I ended up doing was um, it pretty much came down to editing. So that's what I'm going to go over now and show you guys exactly how I edited this and how I put it to this that I put this together to, uh, you know, work. Uh, so, you know, I'm going to show you guys a little bit on how I kind of created it and made it dark and then created a vignette and then used the gels and added some things from there. So we'll go from there. <clears throat> OK, so let's get into it. So I'm gonna try and keep this as short as I can because I have already made this video way too long. I know I have, so <laughs> I'll try and keep this really short. Um, basically, what I'm going to show you guys is how to go from a gray background like this, which was the original picture, to this, okay? So I'm not gonna go over everything of how I did this. It was a lot of different steps and so forth. We'd be here all day if I try and tackle that. The biggest part is just how we get this gray to look something like this, which is like a gel neon kind of look and so forth. How do we create that? And it's a combination of turning the uh, background a different color and then a vignette, okay? So that's kind of what we're gonna cover today. Um, I'm also not gonna cover so much of just how I cleaned up the background, like you see right here. Um, it's a little bit different, well, not different, but it's, you know, a few things that I did to do that. I'll cover that in another uh, tutorial if you want me to, as far as cleaning up things and so forth. A lot of it's frequency separation, whatever. Um, but basically, you know, I don't want to cover everything, guys, because once again, there's so many tutorials out there that cover all this kind of stuff. So I don't really want to go through and cover everything. The biggest thing I want to do is just really show you guys how I started these steps. If you guys want to learn more or want more information or want me to cover different things like how to cut out the subject, frequency separation and all that kind of stuff, please leave comments um, in the section and I'll definitely, 
you know, consider that and look into doing more tutorials upon that. I have no problem covering whatever. I'm just trying to make sure I don't cover the same thing that, you know, you can is easily available and you can find easily on YouTube and every other tutorial video channel and so forth. All right. So without further ado, let's get into it. So really quickly, very simple. As you can see, I cut out the subject. Once again, if you want to learn how to cut out the subject, let me know. I'll cover that if you want. There's a lot of different ways to do it. But for the most part, after you cut out the subject, so we have the foreground, which I use a little bit of cloning to um, cover up some things and then the original of the subject. Um, and then pretty much what we're going to do from here is a couple steps. So the first step we're going to do is I'm going to add um, in the layers uh, adjustment layers section, which is this little half circle at the bottom right here. You're going to click on that and I'm going to go to hue saturation. Okay. From hue saturation, I'm going to take the lightness down. All right. Now there's a lot of different ways to skin a cat. You can do this a lot of different ways. You can do this through levels. You can do this through curves. You can do this through a lot of different options. The reason that I'm doing it this way is because all those different ways create banding. And this option is also going to create banding, but I find that the banding is a little less doing it with hue saturation than some of the other ways. So, you know, that's the best I can tell you on that. Some people have different views on that or there's a different way. I'm pretty sure there's so many different ways to do the same thing in Photoshop. I'm just kind of showing you the quickest, easiest way that I found for myself and works pretty well. All right. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create another adjustment layer of hue saturation, right? And this one, I'm going to go up instead of down. All right. We can kind of use your own uh, guide to how far you want to go with it. All right. I'm then going to take when you create an adjustment layer it automatically creates a mask. I'm going to click on that layer mask and I'm going to hit command or control if you're on PC and I and what that does is the command that inverts. All right. And I inverted it back to originally what it was. OK. Then I'm going to go to my brush. You can hit B for brush. All right. Um, a lot of people always ask me, how do you do this thing here? How do you make the brush get big and small, really simple, uh, thick and feather? Uh, basically, you want to hit control alt if you're on PC and it's control option if you're on Mac, on Mac. And then you're just going to move your mouse left to right. For you guys that are on um, PCs, I'm pretty sure you can also hit control, hold down control hit right click and left click at the same time and do the same thing and you should be able to get the same thing. So left makes it small, right makes it big, up makes it feather, down makes it thick. So that's pretty much how it works. All right, so basically I'm gonna feather it all the way out and I'm gonna make the brush as big as I can. I'm going to make my brush the opposite color of the layer mask, okay? That's what's going to basically create the effect. Whoops, I double clicked on that. All right, so a shortcut to turning the thing is right here. You can hit this little arrow right here. It switches. You see how the palette switches between black and white, or you can hit X and that switches between black and white. All right, we're going to make it white and I'm simply going to click once. Boom. And it creates a layer mask. Now, as you noticed right off the bat, we got a little bit of banding going on here. I'm, I'll cover banding another day because that's that's a whole thing in itself. And once again, there's YouTube videos and stuff on how to handle banding. But you know, you're going to create a little bit of banding sometimes when you do um, any kind of vignette or so forth. All right. All right. So now next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate. I hit command J as a shortcut to duplicate the layer or you can right click and go to where is duplicate um, duplicate layer. There you go. Um, I'm going to pull the duplicate duplicated la, la, la. <laughs> layer up above. Oh, I'm sorry. Actually, no, I'm gonna keep that one where it's at. And then what I'm going to do is go to filter camera raw. All right. And you know, I did some cloning and stuff over and so forth. So it looks a little weird, but we're not even gonna, it doesn't even matter. What I'm going to do is, sorry, I'm going to go to this little tool right here, which is gradient. You see gradient filter and gradient filter gives you a bunch of options in this little arrow. And what you're going to do is click away from the picture and move it into the picture. And you see it automatically creates a gradient. And then we can kind of move the gradient dark to light where we want it, so forth. 
you know, and you can go, oopsie, as light as you want or as dark as you want. It really doesn't matter. All right. So I'm going to take about here. Then I'm going to move over. And if you automatically move out of the space or somewhere else and click again, you create another one and I'm going to move it here. So automatically, you see, we kind of, oopsie, created this gradient. That's just like that. I'm going to hit OK. And watch what happens. We're going to drop that gradient in as so. Boom. All right. So automatically, you see, we started to create some color and some darkness automatically into the picture. Now it's a little bit much, so we're going to take it down. We're going to first use soft light. And there we go. All right. So automatically, you see right there, what happens is if I turn this off before, and after we automatically kind of created a kind of color and scale over, we still kept all the shadows and everything else. And it has a nice look. I'm going to turn this, the opacity down a little bit on this to about 70%. Okay. Um, so that's good. So we automatically kind of created a little bit of the look that we're going for. The next thing that we're going to do is I'm actually going to duplicate the layer and pull it above. And as you see, I put it over the vignette that I created and you see that it did a little bit more and I'm simply just going to turn it down a little bit more, actually way down to about 30%, we did 20, 20%. And there you go. Automatically, we kind of have this vignette look that we're, we're going for, all right? So um, granted, there's a lot of more other things that we would do with the picture and so forth. Uh, before we go on to kind of like last steps and things like that nature. But basically we're going to do one more and we're going to create just a full vignette. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to create a blank layer. That's this little plus sign down here. We're going to go to edit and we're going to go to fill. All right. And then from fill, we are going to keep it on white. All right. And we're going to make a blank white layer. We're then going to go to filter. And we're going to go to camera raw. Um, now, once again, there's a lot of different ways to create vignettes. I like to do it this way because it's just one of the fastest by going to camera raw and going to effects and going into vignette. And we're simply just going to slide the vignette bar and slide it again around this and so forth. And automatically you see it creates a vignette and you can make it as deep or as light as you want it to be. I apologize for my dog. <laughs> All right. Um, so that's kind of where I want the vignette. There's good. We're going to hit OK. And we're going to drop that vignette in. We're going to go to the opacity command and put it on multiply. And boom, there you go. You got your vignette over the subject. Now, as you see, it's a little much. That's fine. All we're going to do is create a layer mask, click on B again. We're going to make the, once again, the color, the opposite color. That's what affects the layer mask. And we're going to simply tap a couple times and just reveal the subject just a little bit. There we go. And then we're going to take the opacity down about 50% and boom, actually it'll take opacity up a bit, about 70%. And there you go. So now we got a nice little vignette over the subject and we still have a nice kind of tone and difference in uh, shadowing and where the subject is and everything else. Now I can play with this a little bit more adjust it, you know, lighten her face a little bit and so forth. And kind of there you go. We can actually switch over the brush and I can just paint in maybe a little bit more where I want the vignette. And there you go. And you automatically got it. So that's pretty much how I created the vignette and how I created the background and, and the darks and lights to kind of create that look that we're going for that makes it look like, you know, she was automatically in a shot like this and, and, and on a black background with the light and everything hitting her the way we wanted to hit it. So I hope that was helpful. And yeah, take it from there. Okay, so I hope you guys enjoyed that. I hope that was helpful. I hope that, uh, you know, you learned something from it. 
and most definitely uh, smash the like button and all that kind of good stuff and tune in next time. Uh, these will be premiering on the group as well as YouTube for now and then I'll be expanding to some other channels and things as well as time goes on and stuff like that. But for the most part, we're going to keep it simple, keep it with the group and the channel, build the group up and kind of help everybody as much as I can. So hope you guys like this and like I said, we'll be doing a lot more soon. So talk to you soon.